Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our sneak preview. Um, we are delighted to get to chat with everybody um, and share what we've been working on. Um, if you would, please, as you're rolling in, I see lots of familiar names, a few new ones. Um, if you would go ahead and hop into the chat and share uh, who you are, where you're coming from. Um, and while you do that, I am going to ask uh, the wonderful, talented, brilliant folks of working with uh, introduce themselves as well as ways of getting us started. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabby Sutherland. I'm the admin assistant for the Center for Black Digital Research and um, the admin coordinator for Douglas Day. Um, uh, this is my second Douglas Day, so I'm very excited. My first one that's mostly in person. Um, the cakes are always fun. I think that's my favorite part, and that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most. I will pass it off to the lovely Courtney. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Courtney Murray, and I am a part of the Douglas Day communications team. I work mostly on the Douglas Day newsletter. And one of my favorite parts of Douglas Day, just like Gabby, I love cake and I love cupcakes and I love tasting the cake that we get every year. But I also like to see like everyone posting about their cakes and their celebration on our social media. And so I will pass it to Denise. Thank you, Courtney. My name is Denise Berger and I am a part of the Douglas Day team as well. I've been doing this with Jim for as long as Douglas Day has been in existence. Um, I do work on curriculum as well as community engagement. And you will be seeing my face probably a lot during the live stream. And I'm going to pass it to Summer Hamilton. Hi everyone, my name is Summer Hamilton. This is my first year working with the Douglas Day team. And um, I'm excited about the cake as well. That's actually one of the things I asked about before I joined the team. So <laughs> I'm excited to get a chance to be a part of it. Um, I help to lead the Zooniverse um, team as I work with curriculum and some with communication. And so I am going to pass it to um, Jen. Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Isassi. I'm the director of the Digital Liberal Arts here at Penn State. This is, I think, my third year helping the Douglas Day team. And my favorite thing is learning about all these wonderful uh, figures from the 19th century that I never learned about in my studies. Um, so while I provide digital um, help with the digital decisions uh, for the team. I'm learning a lot from all of you. Thank you. And I'm going to pass it to Brandy. If she's here. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to pass it to Jen. Nika. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Nika Denny, and I'm an assistant professor of history at Washington and Lee University. Uh, I'm also a Just Transformations postdoctoral fellow in the Center for Black Digital Research this year. Uh, this is my first Douglas Day, and so I'm really excited to be able to share Marianne Shad Carey's work with a broader audience since I do some research on her um, as part of my day job. Uh, and so I'm really excited that more people can learn about everything she was saying and writing about. I guess I'll go. Um, I am Fallen Allen. This is my second year with the Douglas Day team. I'm in second year English literature and Black Studies uh, student here at Penn State in the master's program. Um, and I'm just really excited to see how we can use media this year more so to connect all of these beautiful people from all across the nation in this really, really global uh, national event towards Black history. And that's really exciting to me, seeing how much community we can build together on Frederick Douglass's day. Hey, uh, and I think I'm, I hope I'm not missing anybody here. Uh, my name is Jim Casey. I'm also uh, one of the folks uh, working behind the scenes. Um, probably many of you have gotten emails uh, from Courtney and from me at this point. Um, we are delighted um, to get to see all of you. Uh, we deliberately didn't publish the link to this Zoom on the open web so that 
uh, we could feel a little bit more comfortable having the ability to turn on cameras and mics and all that sort of stuff, uh, if you so feel comfortable. Um, we are going to then uh, hop right into it uh, in the interest of getting to share um, what we have um, as way of our preview just for an agenda for today. Um, we'll start out with um, uh, finishing up our introductions, then we'll have a little bit of the overview about our program and schedule for next week. Um, we have the wonderful Dr. Uh, Denny here to talk to us about Marion Shed Carey, endlessly fascinating person she is. Um, we have some hints uh, on hosting your events, um, a little bit of information about the social media and our favorite thing, our Bake Off. Um, and then Dr. Hamilton is going to give you a sneak preview. Uh, it's the first time we're sharing this brought with broader folks um, of our new crowdsourcing project, Transcribe Shed Carey. Um, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. Um, but I wanna encourage folks as well, as we're going along, um, go ahead and throw questions into the chat. Um, we've got a bunch of folks, as you can see on our crew, on our crew here, um, who will be more than happy to answer any questions as we go along, and then we'll we'll collect them all and be able to let folks um, chime in as well uh, at the end. Um, so I will now pass the mic over to you, Gabby. Thanks, Jim. Um, so I'm just going to give a brief brief overview of the day of schedule. Um, luckily, since things are, you know, everyone's hosting their own event, things are pretty flexible. Um, there are a lot of built-in open times for you to kind of make your own programming. Um, but the broadcast itself starts at noon. Um, we'll start with welcomes and introductions and um, uh, the singing of Lift Every Voice and Sing, and you can uh, get the lyrics on our organizing kit. Um, overview of Douglas Day program, um, we'll kind of give everyone a rundown of the day, um, and then we'll have a few speakers um, on Douglas and Shad. Um, from 12.30 to 1, the broadcast will go quiet. Um, you're invited to listen to our Douglas Day playlist on Spotify while your group transcribes. Um, at 1, we'll come back online. Um, we'll kind of have a little birthday celebration. We'll sing happy birthday and um, recognize Douglas with the reading of Why Hold a Colored Convention. Um, 1.30 to 2, we'll go back to activity, more transcribing and free time. Um, the broadcast will come back at two um, and we'll have a special panel um, led by Dr. Kristen Mariah and Denise Berger with some very special guests. Um, and then 2.20 to 2.45, we're back to transcribing and then we'll wrap up at 2.45 with our Bake Off prizes, some highlights and kind of general reflections on the day. All right, I'm going to pass it back over to Jim. think this many years into Zoom, I'd know how to unmute myself. Um, uh, just as a very brief reminder, we wanted to point folks to this web page. Uh, you can see the URL at the top of the screen, douglasday.org slash kit dash 2023. It's as well as, um, excuse me, it's also linked at the top of the page. Um, and this is an ever-growing array of resources um, that we have tried to make available to everybody just to make your lives as easy as we possibly can. Um, we know that all of you are doing tons of work um, everybody is overloaded in this day and age. And so we want to do as much as we can to help um, grease the wheels for all of the work that you are doing to organize with your schools and communities. Um, and before we launch into talking about marriage at Carey, I also want to say a very, very huge thank you on behalf of all of us um, to a couple of people and institutions without whom we would not be here at all. Um, and first and foremost, of course, are the descendants of marriage at Carey across Canada and across the United States who have done so much to steward her legacy. We are truly, really in their in their debt. Um, I'm delighted that we're joined here um, today by Sean Smith um, and his colleagues at the Archives of Ontario, who have really been instrumental, not just in helping to gather our digital collections, but in the momentum that has really led to our, our work for this year. Um, so we can't say enough fabulous things, um, as well to the folks at Library and Archives of Canada, um, to the incredibly rich, endlessly fascinating collections at the Moreland Spingard Research Center at Howard University, we are beyond grateful. I think we can't quite put into words, um, as well as to the Amistad Research Center and Chronicling America uh, at the Library of Congress as well. Um, so with that, I will now pass the mic to Dr. Denny. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, Marianne Shad Carey is someone who I'm always really excited to talk about uh, because she's someone who exists kind of on the peripheries when we're thinking about 19th century Black activists. There are some well-known figures who she's working alongside, like Frederick Douglass and Martin Delaney, but Shad Carey herself hasn't received as much attention. And so I think it's really important for us to be able to use Douglas Day uh, to highlight the range of work that she was doing. Um, that being said, some of y'all are probably wondering, who is Marianne Shad Carey? 
And I am here to offer you a brief answer to that question. Uh, Marianne Shad Carey was born free in Delaware in 1823 to a wealthy and politically active family. Uh, her father, Abraham Shad, had long been involved in Black activism, and he was a delegate to various uh, colored conventions. When she was around 10 years old, she and her family moved to Pennsylvania, where she attended a Quaker school. Towards the 1850s, she became a vocal proponent of emigration. Uh, Shad Carey essentially argued that African Americans should go to Canada rather than tolerate racism and white supremacy in the United States. This point of view launched her into the middle of some really vigorous debates among other 19th century Black activists. Some, like Shad Carey, advocated for free Black people and fugitives from slavery to flee to Canada. Some instead looked to other locations like Haiti or Liberia. Others, however, were entirely opposed to the idea of leaving the United States because they were of the view that Black people shouldn't have to leave the country that they built in order to be able to experience equal rights. Shad Carey moved to Canada in 1851 where she founded a newspaper called The Provincial Freeman. In so doing, she became one of the first Black women newspaper editors in North America and one of the first women editors in Canada. The newspaper ran consistently from 1853 to 1857 and eventually folded due to financial strain. Chad Carey used The Provincial Freeman as a tool to advocate for the abolition of slavery, to build community among Black Canadians, and to levy critiques against certain Black male leaders who she believed were incompetent or otherwise self-interested. While in Canada, Shad Carey also operated a school with support from the American Missionary Association. She returned to the United States in 1863 at the height of the Civil War, and at this point in time, she began recruiting Black soldiers for the Union Army. Following emancipation, she turned her attention more directly towards women's suffrage, although her abolitionist work had always advocated for women's rights alongside Black people's freedom. Uh, one of the points that she consistently makes throughout her career is that Black women also have a right to mobilize and should not be shut out from the kinds of conversations that were taking place about Black activism during the 19th century. In 1869, Shad Carey enrolled in Howard University's law school which made her the first Black woman in the U.S. to enroll in law school at all. She would not become the first Black woman to complete a law degree, though, as it took her 14 years to graduate. Throughout the 1870s and 1880s, Chad Carey continued to teach in public schools in Delaware and Washington, D.C., and she remained politically active. She traveled around the country delivering lectures, published articles in newspapers, served on the executive board of the National Woman Suffrage Association, and even delivered a speech on woman suffrage to the Judiciary Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives. In 1880, she also founded a short-lived organization called the Colored Women's Progressive Franchise Association. In 1893, Chad Carey died of stomach cancer at the age of 70. Throughout her lifetime, she was a tireless advocate for Black people in general and Black women in particular. Uh, I'm going to stop there and hand it off to Denise for some more information about Douglas Day. Thank you so much, Dr. Denny. I see a lot of familiar faces and names in the chat. So again, thank you so much for joining us for this 2023 version of Douglas Day, where, as Dr. Denny has already so ably introduced, Marianne Shed Carey, we will be working with Marianne Shed Carey's archives. So for the for, the, for those of you who are more familiar with this, this will be just a very, very quick refresher. And so we're just going to very quickly take you through some hints on hosting a great event on Douglas Day. Um, I think whoever's advancing the slides, can you advance to the next slide? Thank you. All right, great. So when you are trying to host a Douglas Day event, what you want to be attentive to is our organizing kit. And in our organizing kit, we have it mapped out so that you have no question or doubt about what you need to do in order to host a great Douglas Day. So you can use our community outreach guide, which provides an extensive set of practical suggestions for building partnerships. We encourage people who are hosting their Douglas Day events to utilize and patronize 
Black businesses where possible. And if you can't, then definitely patronize independent businesses. We encourage you as well to reach out to Black organizations in your community and campus and on your campus. Now, this will give some of you who've never done this an opportunity to develop authentic relationships with these Black groups and or for those of you who already have great relationships to strengthen them. So this is a good time. This is a good opportunity. It's Black History Month. It's an excellent, uh, fun way for people to spend authentic time together. So you definitely want to invite people. Don't just assume that people are going to show up just because you've organized it. You want to make an explicit um, intention and then follow through to invite people. So that means sending them emails, making phone calls, in addition to posting it on your site and distributing the flyer. And yes, we have a flyer template that you can download that is a part of our organizing kit so that you can use. For those of you, again, who've done this before, you know you can send out a media advisement and this literally is an email. Again, we have facsimiles of it in our organizing kit just to let people know what you're doing. Usually on campuses and other kind of um, libraries, et cetera, people want to know what's going on. And so if you give them an opportunity to have that information, it will make it easier for them to participate. If you're at a university or a college, definitely send a media advisory to your local press office. Um, again, they have an entire system that's set up to facilitate dis disseminating, distributing information about events that will help to facilitate participation. If you are interested, you should absolutely order Douglas Day swag. We made it super, super easy. It's right there on the site. You'll be able to get stickers. Um, I think mostly what we have this year is stickers. Um, the winners of the Douglas Day cake contest will get some other stuff. So in terms of social media, tips and strategies, again, share what you find or learn during um, Douglas Day on our Douglas Day Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't followed us, please do. And when you share, make sure to use the hashtag Douglas Day, because what that allows us to do is to track how many people are actually interacting with the hashtag and helps us build momentum online for the actual day of event. So you ask questions, you share. If you, if while you're transcribing, you find an interesting quote or an idea, you can share it there. If there's a picture or there's some kind of a cool little tidbit that you're like, wow, I think people would be interested in, definitely share that with us using the hashtag. Um, make comments on social media, whether on our Instagram, on our Twitter, and or in the comment section of YouTube. Our social media team will retweet all of the cool things that you guys find. And we very often will post them on our live stream because what we're doing is we're creating a forum where we can hear people's voices and share our excitement. And it's actually a lot of fun for those of us who are really interested in this kind of history. It's all of a sudden as if you're in a collective masterclass where everybody is working on the same thing at the same time. And it's a lot of fun. Of course, the lyrics for Lift Every Voice and Sing are available for those of you who've not participated. Um, before, these are the lyrics to the Black National Anthem um, and in homage to not just the historical nature of this music that has been sung really since the 19th century. Um, we always, always create a space for the singing of the anthem and then we're going to be doing that as well this year. If you don't know the words, it's not a problem. The words are available. If you have an in-person room, so for example, you guys are gathering at a community room or a library, we suggest creating a comment board. Place a stack of post-it notes and some markers in the corner of the room. Just ask people to share their ideas or feelings, put it on a post-it note. And then when the wall is full, you can go ahead and take a picture of that and share it with us on social media. We've seen some really interesting things come out of that. Now, this is a practical event. This is a practical event. Not only are we transcribing an archive and making it therefore accessible to hundreds, if not thousands of people without it being behind a paywall, but we are literally transforming the ability that scholars, students, and enthusiasts will have to understand American history, Black history, Black women's history. So what we're doing has practical significance beyond that. We always want to encourage people to not just vote, but to encourage those who may not have registered to vote. We, just like the activist Marianne Shad Carey, create our own reality. And we want to be as careful and conscientious citizens as we can with this in mind. So 
Don't forget social media and our great Douglas Day Bake Off. Don't forget, we are looking forward to hearing from you and we're looking forward to participating with you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Denise. Um, before we transition to getting a little bit more detail about social media and the Great Douglas Day Bake Off, I want to remind you also during your event, please take notes of how your experience is going. Um, is it going well? Is our live stream working well? Just your experience with Douglas Day because directly at 3 p.m., I will be sending a message to all of you to do a feedback form for us so we can make future Douglas Days just as best, just as better as this one will be. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so De uh, Denise has already covered this, but I want to make sure you know where to find us on our social media pages. And so you can find us on Twitter at Douglas Day Org. Instagram, the same thing, Douglas Day Org, YouTube, Douglas Day. And I also want to reiterate that it is very important to use the hashtag Douglas Day because this is how we will be able to not only see how you are celebrating, but also if you have any questions or concerns about the transcription project or you just have questions about the live stream, our social media team will be specifically filtering for this hashtag so we can get your answers to you and make sure you're having a great Douglas Day experience. Next slide. And just like, you know, um, it is very important to do this because we want to connect with you and answer your questions, but also you all can connect with each other to see how you are celebrating. Um, you can get ideas for your celebration next year. We've had people do panels and other things for past Douglas days. And so you'll be able to just have a community about how we can keep this going for next year and create this community. So what to post, you can do videos of speeches that you're having at your event. Um, you and your transcribers and participants singing happy birthday along with us. Cakes, of course, and your transcribers. Uh, just like everyone else has said, we love to see what people are discovering because we have to engage with these materials on a different level. And we like to see how people are also engaging with this on the other end. Um, and also, just like I've said, questions, concerns, anything you want to comment about as you are transcribing it, as you're watching the live stream. Next slide. And so this is an example. This is from our Douglas Day 2020 event that we had at Howard University celebrating the life of Dr. Andrew Julia Cooper. So you can see they had a whole poster and they were connecting their lives as being a part of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Sorority um, with Dr. Andrew Julia Cooper's life. And so they used the hashtag, they tagged us and we were able to have this memory of them celebrating with us in 2020. Next slide. Okay, so this this is the most important part, like the cakes. Um, and so we've had many questions on how do we enter the Great Douglas Day Bake Off? And it is actually a very easy contest to enter. The only thing you have to do is post a picture of your baked good, whether it's a cake, a cupcake, a home project, anything. We will look at it. We will see it. It doesn't matter if it's bought from a black owned store or you made it at home or in your class as a class project, we will consider it as a submission. And this year we are taking it very seriously. Okay. We are going to put, pick three <laughs> winners and we will announce those winners at the end of the live stream. And we will send those winners an exclusive special Douglas Day prize. And so it's very important, please use the hashtag Douglas Day so we can see these beautiful cakes and recognize your work in celebrating Douglas Day. And so these are our cakes from prior Douglas Days. You know, don't, don't, don't talk us, but you know, we're, this is for inspiration. So 2020, we had the sweet potato cake. And the next one is from our last year's uh, Douglas Day cake. Shout out to Gabby for the design. And these are examples that you can do on your own. As you can see, we have different kinds of designs and all kinds of different themes. And we are looking for creativity. That's it, not taste, creativity. So I think that's about it. 
Okay, I'll pass it to Dr. Hamilton. Well, that was um, exciting to talk about. Just as exciting as Zooniverse, just as exciting as cake. <laughs> um, so I wanna talk about some of the activities that we have this year with Zooniverse and how to get started um, with logging in and all that good stuff. So um, what we have on the screen right now is a screenshot in a bit, I'll show you a live demo, but this is an example. This will show you what we have um, for Mary, transcribing Mary Ann Shett Carey this year. So we have, um, as usual, we have the same types of activities, which will be transcribing and finding the names, um, but we have also a variety of documents. So we have some printed documents. We also have some handwritten letters, which I think are really cool um, to get a chance to see correspondence between Mary Ann Shett Carey and others that we can um, now have in printed form. And then we also have um, what we're calling some of the, some more complex transcriptions that have like all sorts of like stamps and letters and drawings and all sorts of things on them. And then very exciting, we also have um, pages from the Provincial Freeman. So Mary Ann Shedd Carey's newspaper, which includes amazing articles, um, poetry, just ads, everything. Everything is worth reading, every part of it. So very excited um, to have all of these types of materials. Um, we can advance the slide. Okay, so um, just a quick overview of some of the activities. So how to transcribe with printed. We will we have um, the guides that you'll be able to look at. And so essentially just uh, just an overview to transcribe means to to get every word down on the page. And that's what we're asking you to do so that we can have a digital version of this material. So type every word top to bottom um, and um, also with, um, with typing the words, you don't have to worry about formatting. Um, we're not looking for that. We're looking for, again, just to capture the information that is on the page. Um, also with finding the names, we um, have the other activity of finding the names, which will be where you are going through and looking for names that are in the document so that we can um, know the people that are in Mary Ann Shatt Carey's world. Um, and then also we'll have finding the names within the, the written documents as well within the manuscripts. So those are the activities that we will be doing this year. And is there a next slide? Okay, so I think at this point, this will show you an example of some of the complex materials. So as I mentioned, we have stamps and seals and drawings. Um, there are also examples where there'll be text that's perhaps vertical or diagonal. We wanna capture everything on the page. So um, the way that everything is coded, I'll show now, I'm gonna share my screen and show you guys. Let's see. Um, you're able to share, just get somebody give me a thumbs up. Okay, awesome. So this is um, Zooniverse. And so when you get to Zooniverse, you'll have the option to sign in and register. And if we encourage you to sign in, if you'd like to be able to collect your images, it gives you some extra features. So this, you don't have to sign in. You could just get right to Zooniverse and just start working. But if you do sign in, it gives you the option to, um, as I said, to collect some different features. Um, one second. Okay. So also, and so if you want to, I encourage you to register beforehand um, to go ahead and register and be ready to get started on Tuesday. Also, as we scroll down, so these are the types of activities that we have. You'll notice that there are asterisks next to the activities, and that's to indicate the degree of difficulty. So that's another thing that I think is pretty cool that we not only have different types of um, activities, but also, you know, depending on what you want in that moment. You don't want something, you know, like um, for like beginner, a little straightforward. You can do transcribing or finding names for the printed. If you're in the mood for more of a challenge, um, then you can get into some of the handwritten manuscript and finding the names there or um, some of our more complex materials. And then as well, the Provincial Freeman. So we're gonna start with our transcribing the printed materials, transcribing the manuscript. And then um, after a while, after I believe like the second round, we're gonna roll out some of the materials from the Provincial Freeman as well. So it's like the, it just keeps on coming. <laughs> the good stuff just keeps coming. So it's kind of exciting that we'll have like the, the different um, waves of materials that will be coming through. So, as you get into, if you click on one of the activities, the first thing that happens is that a tutorial will pop up. The tutorial will only pop up the very first time that you go in, 
but you'll be able to access it at any time that you want to by clicking on the tutorial tab. And so we encourage you to read the tutorial before you get started, just so you feel comfortable and you're ready to, to go through. Um, if you just click continue or use the arrows, it'll give you some information about the different pages. And then at that point, ready to get started. And so as you know, you'll just um, type into the what you see. You'll type what you see into the box and continue. And once you are finished, um, you will click done. If you need some help, we have a few different areas that you can go to. You can click on the tutorial once again. You can click on the need some help tab question. You can also click on the done and talk, no, not, not, don't click on done and talk. <laughs> you can also click on the talk button um, if you have other questions. Um, there is no save, no auto save. So um, the, um, the document is only saved once you hit done. So be aware of that. And you may find if you want to like use a separate document, like a Word document to kind of, if it's long, you want to keep your material, make sure that you don't accidentally edit, exit without saving, but just be aware that there is no save, no auto function. Um, if you find that, if I can show you, if you find that you get to a document or let's go back out, um, let's go into the manuscript. So this gives you an example. Once again, you see the tutorial pops up, you read through the tutorial. It tells you about how to get started transcribing, how to also look for names and how to mark um, words that are unclear. So. Um, once you get here, so sometimes the handwriting can't, this handwriting is actually pretty clear, pretty good, pretty good page. So sometimes the handwriting, as you know, it was script, you know, and sometimes cursive is not as popular as it once was, right? So sometimes some of our students may be, you know, a little bit ah, foot off, but we encourage everyone to give it a, give it a go. Um, and once you get in there and start trying, um, you know, if you don't know a word, we do encourage guessing, guess, and, and that may take you to the next word. So do your very best. If you can't get all the words, that's fine. Just do your best and capture what you can get down on the paper. If it just seems impossible, if you know, like, I just, I, this is not the page for me, that's also fine. There, There's plenty, plenty for everyone. So if that happens to be the case, then we encourage you just to reload your page. And if you do that, you get a new page. So, and you'll be ready to go. Um, okay, so also at the top we have um, the buttons, the about, classify, talk, and collect, and these are places that you can go for more information. So the about is going to take you to some things about the project itself. There's an FAQ page. You can learn more about the team. Um, back to classify will give you the document that you're working on. Talk is where you can post on the message form if you're having some questions. And then collect, if there are images that you're like, oh, I really like this. I want to kind of look at this later. You can, and you've signed in, you can have a collection of um, the things that you've transcribed, a collection of the images as well. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. And it should take us back to the slideshow. If I can ask Jim to share again. Yeah, I, I think that that brings us to the finish line, perhaps. Awesome. Um, uh, just to, to emphasize as well for folks, um, you know, there, there are a bunch of different activities. And so we'd really encourage folks to try, you know, maybe get comfortable a little bit with some of the printed stuff. Um, and then if they feel adventurous, there's some really, really cool stuff um, that has come via the Archives of Ontario um, that was part of a, uh, a trunk of materials that was in an, an old farmhouse that went sort of unknown for many, many decades. Uh, that when it was rediscovered, I think in the 1980s, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it turned out to be a, a large amount of material in Shed Carey's handwriting, uh, sort of papers from her life um, in Canada. Uh, these are truly incredible materials uh, that there's been a lot of work um, by so many people to make available. So we are over the moon about those materials. Um, and then uh, alongside those, um, as Dr. Hamilton mentioned, uh, is that we are going to be working on the Provincial Freeman. Um, this is a newspaper that has not been widely and easily available. Um, our, our friends up in Ontario, of course, at the Our Digital Worlds Project have published um, versions of the microfilm, but these are high definition scans from our friends at the University of Pennsylvania um, libraries and the, at the Kislek Center. Um, so there's some amazing stuff in here and there's tons of it. And so as your students, colleagues, friends really dive into the newspaper, we'd love to hear what people are finding um, because these are such rich materials. So we're really, really excited. Um, about how these things go along. Um, I see a few questions already popping up, but I encourage folks 
um, to fill out uh, in the comments. Um, and perhaps in a moment, we'll invite folks um, to raise their hand or to turn on their mics um, as that might go along um, as we get started. Just to answer a few quick questions, but I'll invite uh, the rest of the Douglas State folks to chime in as well. Um, the project will go online on February 14th in the morning, um, usually about 10 a.m. Eastern, um, so that everybody can have access. And it will remain online. All of the materials will remain online for as long as it takes. Um, among the archival materials, we have about 1,100 pages worth of material. Um, when we add the Provincial Freeman, that puts us out to somewhere in the realm of 15 or 16,000 articles. Um, so there's a lot, there's a long runway here. Um, we think a lot of the best stuff will go very, very quickly in the past. Um, uh, so many thousands of folks who are participating have managed to, to transcribe an archive up and down in a single afternoon, which is frankly amazing. Um, but we think that the Provincial Freeman will likely take us more than a day or two um, to get all the way through. Um, if you are gonna be holding events later on after the 14th, after the live session, please be in touch with us so that we can make sure that we have somebody available to look out on any kind of social media interactions or if there's questions that come up, um, there's enough of us that we can usually help to, to support when your events are running. Um, uh, so uh, I think this also answers um, Karen Hollis's question as well. Um, uh, we were we were worried initially until the Provincial Freeman came through that, um, that so many people had signed up that we would get through it very quickly. But I think now that we've managed to get um, thousands and thousands of articles from the Provincial Freeman. There's there's not much risk um, that we're going to get through it all um, too, too quickly, uh, though we expect that it won't take us too long, given how much uh, work folks in this room are doing. Um, Summer, maybe could I ask you to respond to, to Jessica Mack's question? Yes, absolutely. So the Find the Names activity is a two-step activity. And the first question will just ask you, do you see any names on this page? and you just browse, you know, not browse, actually <laughs> read through and look for any names, any initials, anything that looks like a name. And if you see one, you say yes. And then the next page will ask you, will enter the name. And in that point, you'll enter the name and whatever, if there are more, more than multiple names and you'll separate them by semicolons. And that's the, that's the activity and you hit done and you go to the next page. Does that answer that question, Jessica? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we can invite other questions. I will respond uh, at least briefly to your uh, question, Sean, um, by sharing that this is one of the largest Douglas days that we have ever seen before. Uh, there are 124 groups across the US, Canada, Europe, Africa, um, who are participating in this year's event. And so that's partly why we're so excited about the social media so that we can all really get a chance to see how many thousands of people? I think we're we're just passing seven or so thousand people at this point um, who are coming out to celebrate Mary and Shred Carey's um, uh, 200th birthday party. Sorry, did you just say we passed 7,000? We have. Amazing. And that is truly only thanks to the folks in this room. Um, we see when you do all of your work and those photographs come in, how much work you're putting in. Any other questions, points that we might spend a little bit more time to, to dive into some details on? Um, we'd be happy to share as we can. I do want to make a note in the transcribing and finding the names, um, just to follow up on that for the manuscript ones, for the, the handwritten, because um, it, because it, it kind of takes more labor to read handwriting. Um, so we are ask, actually asking that to be a simultaneous activity. So while you're transcribing the handwriting, if you see a name, you'll just put a bracket around it as you go. And that's all written on in the directions for the task. So that one's a little different because you're doing the work anyway of translating sort of handwriting into, into um, print. So, so. And, and if it helps just to expand a little bit on why that makes such a difference for us um, is that we'll be having each of these materials transcribed um, or sort of have the names identified in them by a couple of people um, for each page that we have. And so that we do because we wanna make it um, the, the case that people can take guesses, that we don't have to worry about getting everything 100% right because other people will weigh in on that particular page. And after all of the transcribing work is done, 
our team and a bunch of our collaborators will get together and then distill and and gather all of the materials to put online um, to make these materials freely available. And so helping us to find transcriptions that we can give to people to make all of it searchable will be a huge leap forward. Um, but also finding all of the names in these materials will help us to develop metadata that will let us do things like find out where Marin Shed Carey's sisters were showing up or how we can find connections between people who were sort of crossing across uh, so many different parts of her life. Um, so this is really gonna help both the research communities, but also the larger communities of folks uh, in both Canada and the US were really, really engaged in recovering, stewarding her, her memory here in the 200th anniversary. Um, and so what we'll do as we um, uh, uh, get those materials together, that tends usually to take about six to 12 months, just given the volume um, of things. And so when those things become available uh, in response to Grace's question, um, we will be uh, spamming all of you as much as possible um, to come share and celebrate uh, our collective work and the things that it has made available. Um, so we are um, likely going to take at least a few months to, to sort of clean and polish all the materials. Um, but we are really, really excited to make these just widely as, as available as possible. Um, I see a few other questions, but I'd love to, to amplify uh, Amanda's comment about inviting classes. If you're at a college or university, there are lots of times where classes are meeting during Douglas Day um, or might be willing to, to have instructors who can offer extra credit uh, for students who could come or just join from their couches and, and share it for extra credit a little bit. Um, I'm also looking at a list of people who have organized, I know, fabulous, incredibly rich events for years and years. And so I would love not to put people on the spot, uh, but to invite anybody who's in the room in the comments or to turn your mic on um, to share a little bit about what has worked for you. What have you found to be your favorite part or the most useful sort of strategies that you've brought to sort of organizing some of these events um, over the course of the years? Um, and as well, folks, perhaps reflect on that. Um, I might as well ask Denise as well to, to maybe um, uh, weigh in here too. Sorry about that. I had to relocate briefly. Um, I think that the biggest thing really is to have fun. Right, like this is actually a lot of fun. It's interesting. There's a lot of stuff to learn. Um, you really actually can't get it wrong, if that makes sense. Um, we have the instructions that are there so that you'll be able to follow the instructions without any difficulty. Um, we're there, people are online posted the entire time to ask any questions or to verify any information that you want to have verified. So I think really honestly, the biggest thing would be to just have fun, to be flexible and have fun. Um, and to share as you go. That would really be it. Great. Uh, Karen, please. Uh, yes. Hi. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, one thing that I've done over the years that I've found uh, everybody enjoys is when students are transcribing and they come upon something that really surprises them or they find very moving or or very important, or it connects to some historical event that they know about to raise their hand and read it out loud. And we get a lot of oohs and ahs and amazement in it. I think it really brings that history to life. So I'd like to encourage people to just ask their students, when you, when you find something that stands out, let us all know. That's so fabulous. Thank you for that. I think that's some of our favorite moments too, when we get to read these, these things aloud. Um, I will pass the mic next to Jasmine, if I follow that right. Yeah. Um, and just to, to briefly follow up on, on your comment, Karen, um, one other strategy that we have had, sometimes out of necessity, if we don't have enough laptops in the room, um, but sometimes because it's more fun, is to encourage folks to work collaboratively together to transcribe. Um, one person can sort of stare at the screen and another person could work the keyboard. And that kind of exchange tends to be really fun, especially when you get to a page and you think, I don't know at all what it says on this page, and you can sort of dive into the document together. Um, but Jasmine, please. Yeah, um, I mean, one thing that I have found very helpful is faculty. Um, so within my department in particular, there's a lot of community work or interest in community work, and a lot of them have documents themselves. 
um, and they're not familiar with digitization or best transcription practices. Mm -hmm. So um, I have found it a really great thing to say like, hey, familiarize yourself with Zooniverse. These are some ideas that you might want to think about implementing for your own work. Or I've had one professor who really liked the model and said they wanted to do it for a class. So introduce the papers of um, a topic of the class and then have students help transcribe it. So I do think that this is a model for broader digital projects and that a lot of faculty who want like an introduction into a digital project and like a workflow that this provides a really great model for that. So as a part of outreach, I kind of specify that when I reach out to people. Amen to that. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. Um, if we can even uh, double down on that and put a bug in people's ear, um, we build these projects each and every year um, because we know that there's so much interest in folks being able to engage who aren't necessarily professional historians or librarians or students um, who really want to engage in Black history in meaningful ways to make a contribution. Um, and we don't nearly have enough projects like these. Um, so if you're ever interested in talking, we'd be more than happy to follow up um, in conversations about our experiences with Zooniverse. They've been incredibly supportive. Um, Sam, Dr. Sam Blicken, especially their humanities lead, um, has done more to answer questions from Summer and Justin Smith in the past from me. Um, we couldn't say enough about how much they've done to enable this work. So if we can help make those connections to help uh, cheerlead from the sidelines as we see more projects um, arising, uh, we are here for that. Um, any other folks? We don't need perhaps to use the whole hour if um, if folks feel comfortable, but we want to especially make space for um, any other folks who might want to share or pose questions um, on the mic or in the chat. Um, and I perhaps will also invite uh, the rest of the Douglas Day crew um, who knows so much and has thought about this so carefully, uh, if there's any other aspects that you would love to, to um, add here in our waning minutes. Okay. Uh, well, perhaps um, uh, we can start to move towards a conclusion here. Um, and I think to, uh, to Stephanie's Richmond question, um, we have tons and tons of people, a couple hundred people every year who will just join, I think from their couch or the break room at work, or I got a, a text one year from somebody who said, I'm on the bus right now and I'm, I'm watching the live stream and transcribing. And I thought that feels like the right place for doing some black history work. Um, so uh, if you stay tuned on February 14th, we will send all of you an email with the key links. We will post those links um, that morning on our Twitter, Instagram, and on our homepage um, so that when you go to DouglasDay.org in giant billboard size letters, you will see a link to our YouTube live stream and then our link um, to our Zooniverse project so that folks can get started. We would love to hear from any folks who might have questions. Um, please feel free to get in touch by email, by social media. Uh, anything that we can do over the next week and ongoing um, to support your work, we are incredibly grateful that so many people have taken time out of their busy schedules to organize Douglas Day events. It's really and truly the thing that brings us back every year um, are the folks in this room um, and your broader communities. Um, so uh, we would love to say thank you. Uh, we would love to say happy almost Douglas Day. Um, and we'd invite folks, if you have any last questions, to stick around. Otherwise, um, I think we can adjourn. Uh, as they would say in the conventions.